she was on that plane because she loved me. She trusted me. And now she's dead. So... Did I murder her? No. Do I punish myself every single day for the way that she died? Yeah, of course. I'm really sorry for, for asking you about it, but you know, it was such a huge thing that I... I know. Well, it's not like you had much choice in the matter, especially given the way that Finn was staring. Mm. But he's threatened by me. That's what this whole thing is about. Well, I'm going to speak to him. Right now. Are you OK? Hello. It's Edward Hutchinson. That little problem we've got... I'm going to need your help to get rid of it. The inquest could not find the evidence to secure a conviction. That actually means he totally did it. Everyone knows he did it. They just can't prove it. Look, oh I'm starting to think that this was a mistake. Hey, you did the right thing. What did he say? Well, what do you think he said? You went raking off one of the most painful experiences of his life. Oh, yeah. Turned on the crocodile tears, did he? Well, you can keep your nose out of it. You know, you might think you're some hotshot journalist, but you shouldn't go messing with people's lives. But I've got a right to go looking for the truth. And people have got the right for their past to remain in the past. I thought you would have understood that. I do. Well, he's explained everything, OK? So I don't want to hear another word about it. And you know... You know I'm struggling without Tony, and I need Edward's support right now. But you've got me. But all you're doing is causing trouble and upsetting people. Do you know Edward thinks I should cut the apron strings a bit? Stop making excuses for you? And I'm starting to think he might be right. I wish I'd have left it alone. Keep my mouth shut. You're totally blaming me, aren't you? No. I don't know. I went along with it. And I've upset my mum. Then nick a couple of steaks out the freezer and make a dinner. Tell her you're sorry. You were trying to protect her. She can't hate you for that. You're right. I'll do that. Oh, what do you want? To commend you on your investigative journalism. Do you want? Mm. Although I think you'd be far better placed using those skills to find out a little more about your new best friend. Mm? Look, did you pore over those newspaper articles? Did you immerse yourself in the details of his crimes? Mm. I suggest you do. It's all on there. It's quite an eye-opener. There you are. I really don't think this is a good idea. Well, trust me, Sally, it's the only way. I need to speak to him first. <sighs> oh, it's so good to see you, love. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's going on? What's the emergency? Finn O'Connor. We need your help to get him out of the village. As far as I'm concerned, Finn stopped existing the minute he went to prison. It's hard to ignore him when he's hanging out in the village. What's this got to do with you? Well, I explained who Edward was. He's Tony's dad. He's living with Finn. And I can see the damage he's causing. Sally and I have talked. She tells me you were at a teaching conference in Manchester. I couldn't bear to come and see her because of Finn. I didn't explicitly say that. This is obviously a horrible mistake. Hang on. 
Don't underplay how distressing this has been for the whole family. Nancy, too. It's distressing to be told that there's an emergency, only to find out that you want me to grab a pitchfork and chase him out the village. This is an emergency. Sally is desperate to see you, but can't because of Finn. I mean, look at the mess she's in. She didn't even know me when it happened. And that's why it hurts so much that I wasn't in your life to protect you. I couldn't offer any sort of support. Sally can't just pack up and leave, nor can Nancy. They have lives here. They've expressed their concerns, told him how they feel. Finn won't listen to us. But he, he might listen to you. So you want me to go over there after five years of rebuilding my life and confront the man that raped me? Finn is making his home in this place, which means you never can. It's not right that you're being forced to stay away. I choose to stay away. I'm sorry, I can't help you. But I, I'll, I'll be in touch. Yeah, maybe you can come and visit. Easter holidays or something. Easter? Right now, I need to go. And for the record, I've got a number of ghosts in this village. He's not the only reason I choose to stay away. Intense before. Everything all right? <laughs> you see a snapshot of someone's life and you make a judgment. Same old John Paul. <laughs> Last time I saw you, you rolled a car off a cliff. The things we do for love, eh? I'm really sorry about Harry. Yeah, don't be. <clears throat> I pushed him away too. You ever tried having a normal, loving relationship? <laughs> I assume that's what you have. No. I'm single again. Is that way back here? No, it's complicated. It's a flying visit. It's my, my last for the foreseeable. You knew about Finn being released, right? Just weren't quite prepared for the full reality of it. It's been made an awful lot worse by Sally and, bizarrely, Tony's dad. He's got it into his head that I'm the only one that can convince Finn to leave town, so... Well, if you want me to put him in the boot of a car... <laughs> yeah, I'm never sure if you're joking or not. See? You try being the nice James, eh? The one that smiles. Haven't had much to smile about. I've got a flight to catch him. Thanks for the drink. Are you not tempted to go around there and talk to Finn? What would I say to him? I'm sure you've rehearsed those words a thousand times. And you can let them meet you up inside, or you can go around there, look him in the eye, and let them out. Look, you need to know that our Finn's doing really well. Actually, <clears throat> you know, he's... he's done his time and he's just... he's just trying to move on with his life. Oh. Bravo. Bravo, Finn. It's like... it's five years, just wipe it all away. I don't think like that at all. Well, go on, then enlighten me. What are you thinking? The impact on my crimes will last a lifetime. That the people I've hurt will never be able to move on. I'll drop the sound bites. He means everything he says. What, spewing out something that his counsellor once told him? I know how much devastation I caused. But it's how much you're causing. You don't know how hard he is trying. He's got a daughter to think about as well. Little Bella. I mean, that is a reason to try and get his life back on track. Shut up, Diane! Hey! You know, I, I didn't come here to do this. I, I didn't come here to shout at you. I don't know why I came. They wanted me to. And I refused. I told them I didn't see the point. But now... 
see in your face. I get it. I get what they're going through. Don't understand. Who are you talking about? Who wanted you to come? We did. You? This has gone on long enough. So you're part of this? I know you want the best for your son, but it's becoming impossible to ignore the impact he's having on the community. I might have known you'd stab me in the back. You're playing the victim here. Do you really want to go there? You saved us time, Nancy. Lucky Finn. He's doing his best. He tried to apologise. No, 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 no. What does that mean? Apologise? What? So, so you, you want me to forgive him? In time? My job is, is to forget him. That, that, that's what I've been trying to do. We all have. But if you could just see him at home, you know, what he's like around his family. That may very well be true. But we can hate him for the rest of our lives. That's our right. And we will. We get to process our pain in, in any way we want. And he wants a second chance. Why can't he have that? OK. Yeah, fine. Second chance. I, I accept the principle of that. People should have the right to change, to atone for their sins. People can turn their lives around. I, I would never deny anybody that. Thank you. But if what you say is true, if you really are a better person, look around you, Finn. Look at the pain in their eyes. Know that you're still causing that. If you have reformed, why are you putting them through it? Why are you putting your mum through it? I mean, she's suffering too. I don't know. Then leave. No. No, I, I'm fine. All of his family's here. Yeah, so's mine, so's Nancy's. Don't we come first? Like it or not, there is a big sign above your head and it says, I raped your son. I raped you. Take that away. Look, if there is anywhere else that you can go, any chance that you've got for a better life somewhere else, for the goodness that you say is in your heart, and go.